Happy Halloween, jabronis. My name is Meg and I like building things in The Sims. Today I bring you the infamous Borden House from Fall River, Massachusetts. So this build is mostly going to be based off the house as it is today since that's what I can get the most information on because um, it's, it's currently a bed and breakfast. I think you can like rent it out and stay there if you're interested. Um, so there are a few museum-y items in there, and I have like a couple of mannequins, like they do um, a, presumably with some of the girls' old dresses and whatnot. Uh, my mannequins obviously are the Sims mannequins, so they look a little weird, but let me know if there is a mod that I can change the in-game mannequins, because they're ugly and weird looking and I hate them. And I couldn't find any. And all the CC I found, they were just like decor items. Like you couldn't change their outfits. But there is a modern kitchen um, that looks like how the B&B looks for functionality more than anything. Um, and I did want to do some things more like what the state of the house would have been when the Bordens lived there. So like there's no like extra bedrooms in the basement and stuff. I think there are three sinks in the house. There's one in the kitchen, one in the basement, and one in a sink room off the back door. Uh, the sink rooms in the real house would have had like water pumps, uh, but I did sneak a tub into what was supposed to be one of those upstairs, like for functionality in the game. Uh, in the real house at the time, I'm pretty sure everyone would have had like their own wash tubs in their bedrooms that they would have to like bring hot water to to take a bath because Andrew wasn't paying for plumbing throughout the whole house. There was one flushing toilet from what I read in the basement um, and then yeah like the two water pump sink rooms. But so that only toilet in the basement is the only one that is inside the house and then I placed um, another toilet that is kind of like what they had as their outhouse situation in what was their barn on the property which I didn't build the barn I built like what they have as the garage now but at the time the Bordens did have a barn on the property and it was like repurposed because they didn't have horses anymore but some people think Lizzie kept pigeons in there but there was definitely like an outhouse in there and I wanted the garage that I built to be decorated kind of like the barn that would have been on the property at the time so I did that and like the lore with the barn outhouse is that a lot of people think that that is where the murder weapon was stashed or thrown away is because that outhouse wasn't like plumbing it just went straight into the ground right so when they demolished it and like grounded it it would have been gone forever I don't know, seems pretty foolproof to me. Let me know what you guys think. But yeah, so anyways, I'm building this in Forgotten Hollow, um, if you're curious. This will be on the gallery. Uh, my ID is the Megstar. I'll have that below in the description, along with all the CC and mods that I use for this build. I'll also go ahead and link some of the like information that I came across during my research, in case anyone is interested. But I'm sure everyone has heard the rhyme by now, Lizzie Borden took an axe and gave her mother 40 wax. When she saw what she had done, she gave her father 41. It's a crime rhyme so catchy that we're still knowing it 130 years later, you know? But anyways, so Lizzie was the last of three children. Uh, her sister Emma was 10 years older than her, and her sister Alice died in infancy. Um, Sarah, their mother, died when Lizzie was two years old, and then their father, Andrew, remarried while Lizzie was five years old to Abby. But Lizzie never saw Abby as a mom. Um, they supposedly never even got along. And then at some point, Andrew, Lizzie's father, bought a house for Abby's sister? And the girls got super jealous, and so apparently he bought them their grandfather's house and then bought it back from them. Anyways, Lizzie went full formal after that and wouldn't call Abby mother only Mrs. Borden. We love a petty queen. 
So Andrew and his family were super wealthy. He was a bank president, but he did not like to spend money. So it put Lizzie in kind of a weird place between the rich kids and the poor kids growing up. I did try to use some like lighting fixtures and plumbing that are usable off-grid in the game as like an homage to the fact that he wouldn't pay for electricity or plumbing, according to legend. So I put like lots of oil lanterns and candles, uh, and I also placed kind of like a mix of expensive and cheap or used looking uh, furniture and decoration throughout the house. Like Fall River had money, but the Bordens lived in like an industrial part of town and the rest of like Andrew's extended family who was super rich, they lived on a place called The Hill and that's where all the Richies lived and they were all rich together. And Lizzie was super jealous of them forever. The girls did not have much of a social life whatsoever. Um, growing up, they pretty much only went to school and church. And Lizzie actually dropped out of high school in her junior year because she wasn't passing it. Uh, she also used to shoplift, as many white women still do. So, so much so that the clerks would know to just bill Andrew for whatever Lizzie took. But they seemed to have a pretty good relationship still. His body was found wearing a ring that Lizzie had given him. But someone broke into the Borden house a few months before the murders and only stole like 50 bucks and some jewelry from Mrs. Borden specifically. Uh, two weeks later, Andrew called off the investigation and started having everyone just lock all the doors in the house all the time. So the door situation in the upstairs, the door situation in the whole house is weird. There's no real hallway um, in the house. It's just all the rooms are connected to each other. And then there are like little hallways by each of the two staircases in the house. It kind of separated the living areas for Mr. and Mrs. Borden and for Lizzie and Emma. They were kind of like, they used different stairways and halls to get to their bedrooms. But there were doors like everywhere. They like even used to nail some of them shut so that like there was one in between Lizzie's room and Mr. and Mrs. Borden's room and they nailed that one shut. So you will see I like I placed furniture in front of some doors uh, upstairs and it's intentional like they did that too in the house um, so it's just weird but yeah after the break-in Andrew just started having everybody lock all the doors all the time I guess but he apparently like also left like a cheeky little bedroom key of his like sitting in the sitting room open for everybody I don't know read into that what you will a lot of people have read a lot into that as well as everything else in this case but yeah, so the whole family got sick in the beginning of August, and on the 3rd, a doctor visited, and um, Abby thought their bread was poisoned, and Lizzie told a friend she thought the milk was poisoned and some, someone was after her father. Uh, she said she was afraid of someone burning the house down. But there are a lot of different theories about poisoning going on in early August there. So on the morning of August 4th, Emma was out of town, and as usual, Lizzie did not eat breakfast with Mr. and Mrs. Borden. Uh, Mr. Borden went to work at the bank, and Abby went to make the bed in the guest room where Lizzie's uncle had stayed the night before. This is where her body was found. Andrew came home early, and the side door was like locked from the inside and so was the front door so he was like trying to get into the front door and their maid Bridget heard him and came to undo the locks and let him in and she says she heard Lizzie laughing in the stairwell at this time. So Andrew asked about where Abby was and Bridget said she had gone out somewhere and then so Andrew took a nap in the sitting room and this is where his body was found. So Bridget was later woken up by Lizzie screaming um, as she found her father's body. Uh, police came and the officers were super surprised by how like, composed Lizzie was. They were like, I've seen battle and she's more composed than I would be. But everybody who knew Lizzie said that she was like a weird, kind of awkward, but pleasant and gentle person. So the rhyme is 40 wax and 41, right? So, but actually, uh, Andrew 
suffered 11 whacks and Abby suffered 19. And we know that Abby was killed first. Um, and if Lizzie did not do it, she certainly knows who did do it. Uh, she never said it until her death, and neither did her sister. Her sister also maintained her innocence as long as she lived. But people were torn about this case from the very beginning. Uh, nobody immediately suspected Lizzie. Uh, this was a man's crime, after all, and she had no blood stains. The weapon was never found. But... She didn't have a lot of options as a single woman in her 30s. She couldn't just go live on her own at the time. She was not getting along with her stepmother. Uh, tons of theories. Some people think she was gay and that's why she was. people saw her as weird. She was investigated after her father and Mrs. Borden's funeral. Um, and Lizzie did not impress the cops with her memory. Her story changed quite a few times. She said she was in the barn. The cops said there were no footprints in the barn, but there were kids playing in there, so there should have been. Uh, then a pharmacist came out and said Lizzie tried to purchase poison from him the day before the murders. She said it was to get rid of some moths, but didn't get it. And there were witnesses that saw her there. Um, so she was arrested on August 11th and pled not guilty. She was in jail until her trial started in June of the next year. So um, and from the very beginning, nobody could agree if Lizzie was innocent or not. They still don't. She sure got the best defense team she could have, though, I think. Um, the prosecution's case was big circumstantial. Um, they took 10 days. A friend said she walked in on Lizzie burning a dress in the kitchen because it was quote unquote covered in paint, sus because she changed her dress apparently while the police were searching the house, and then a cop said she overheard Lizzie and Emma when um, Emma came to visit her in jail and they were arguing and Lizzie was like, you've given me away, but both girls denied this conversation happened. Uh, the prosecution also tried to use a hatchet found in the basement. I placed one in there with extreme violence, um, but it had no blood on it. It was only ash. And they, they literally brought these people's skulls into the courtroom and tried to like puzzle piece the hatchet they found in the holes. Didn't even work. Outrageous plan. They were like uh, describing Lizzie as swooning when that happened. Like, no shit, bro. Anyways, the defense took one day. They offered a reward from Lizzie and Emma for finding the murderer, as well as plenty of reasonable doubt. Emma was called by the defense as the last witness, um, and she offered even more reasonable doubt. She said Lizzie and Abby were always cordial, and that she told Lizzie to burn that dress because there was paint on it, um, as well as denying that argument that that cop said that she heard. The jury decided not guilty in 10 minutes, but pretended to deliberate for an hour. But yeah, Lizzie went back to Fall River. Um, everybody ostracized her. Nobody wanted to talk to her. She couldn't go back to her church. None of it. But she and Emma wanted to stay there, so they sold their house, and they bought a big one on the hill where all the Richies lived to rich together um, in a house called Maplecroft, just like they always wanted. And Lizzie started going by Lizbeth and going to the theater. And she partied apparently with her theater friends so hard that Emma eventually moved out and stopped talking to her. Um, but she never backtracked on Lizzie's innocence. Lizzie passed away in 1927 from complications from a surgery at 67 years old. Emma passed away nine days later at 77 years old. Um, in her will, Lizzie left nothing to Emma but $30,000 to the Animal Rescue League of Fall River. It was well known that Lizzie always loved animals, um, but there is only one kind of rumor about her having any sort of pets while she was growing up. Um, some people say she had pigeons that she kept in the refurbished barn. And there are also rumors that Andrew would occasionally kill them to eat them. But this is all widely speculated and scrutinized, along with everything else in this case. Um, but I did put a wild flock of birds just outside the garage. Um, pretty much my only option to get birds in this game. But I popped those over there with a little birdhouse in that um, abandoned kind of barn decoration that I did. 
But yeah, that is kind of the basics of this classic 1892 case, uh, Lizzie Borden. Let me know if you've heard this case. If you have anything to add, I'd love to hear it in the comments down below. As far as the build goes, you can see I'm kind of finishing up this main floor here. That was one of the sink rooms. I do change that to one of those wood sinks from um, the ranch, the horse ranch pack. And uh, here you can see kind of the beginnings of this crazy floor plan up here. So you can see that this room is only right now accessible from that back staircase, which is how they had it in real life because the door that I'm gonna place later in between this room and Lizzie's room uh, was nailed shut. But yeah, I do use a few CC packs in this build. Um, the windows and doors and shutters are from Peacemaker, the austere pack. Um, I used quite a bit of Felixander Grove and some of his new pack Chateau. Um, the garage door is from Ravashin. I just need the Sims to put a real garage door in the game, please. Um, and then I did use a little bit from Pierre Sims MCM and Domain Duclos packs. Those will all be linked below if you're interested. Um, but as far as Maxis packs, I used a lot of the Vampires pack, obviously, and then a lot of base game, and then some country living, and horse ranch, because they have a lot of those like older wood pieces. Victorian style is crazy, y'all. Yeah, you can probably see that door that I placed with the tool mod um, sideways there next to the back staircase to kind of make it look like a door that opens on the ground to get down because that's how it is in the real house. Not functional, but looks great, I think. Yeah, finishing up Andrew's bedroom over there with the huge wood bed um, and this is a little closet. And then the room off the stairs landing there is another sink room, which I snuck the little tub into for gameplay. And over here is the guest bedroom where Mrs. Borden was found. Um, you can see I've got some uh, carpet stains and I also put one by the couch downstairs. But yeah, radiators in pretty much every room. And here's like a little image of the floor plan, how it was when the Bordens were living there. You can see we're in the guest room now, which has a door off of one of the only hallways um, by the two staircases on either side of the house. Um, and then catty corner from that is Lizzie's bedroom. And off of Lizzie's bedroom is Emma's bedroom. And then you can see where Lizzie's bed was placed in front of that door between her bedroom and Mr. and Mrs. Borden's room because it was literally nailed shut. So there was only a way to get to the primary bedroom from the back staircase and you could only get to Lizzie and Emma's bedroom from the front staircase. You can see Mrs. Borden's dressing room off of the primary bedroom there to the left. Um, that was her sewing room, so that's why I put all those knitting and cross stitch items in there. But we're in Lizzie's room now here. Um, you can see I put the door there and I placed the bed in front of it. I think I'm gonna put a chair in front of it in um, the primary suite as well. And they each had little closets back there. I think I just put like a wardrobe in each of them just for functionality. Here's the famous red chase that is still in the house, I believe. And then this desk was actually against the door in between this bedroom and the guest bedroom. Um, but for functionality again, it's like so it works, I placed it there. That corner was actually where her like little wash tub was. And then here's Emma's room. Only door is off Lizzie's room. I am gonna end up putting um, a mannequin in here with uh, probably a dress from vampire stuff pack uh, just like the one downstairs because that's what they have in the bed and breakfast right now and then finally we are in the basement so this um, 
1890s basement was crazy for me to build because I was like, I don't know what any of this stuff is. <laughs> but they had like piles of wood and coal everywhere. And uh, I put like an old looking fireplace and that little square room gets smaller and that's where the wood toilet is, or not the wood toilet, the toilet that actually does flush in the house, that's where that is. And then I put a wash tub and since I did that, you gotta have somewhere to dry it, put that out there. Um, and you need a laundry basket, throw that in there. But yeah, uh, just super, like how, like a pile of coal? Anyway, so I found like a, like a toy train with a pile of coal in it and sized it up for some coal piles and I put like, not like nice looking wood piles, but you know, there are wood piles. I uh, used the tool mod to turn, what, what is that called, a humidor, is that right? That thing that we have uh, upside down so that it looks like it doesn't have a roof on it. You'll see me do that in a little bit. But so this room is where the hatchet was found that they tried to use, uh, the prosecution tried to use in their abysmal case. And so here I am trying to place one, yep, right there. Sneaky. Um, so this, I moved to the back. I don't know what's going on because I think there's like a furnace down here. How, and I can't build a furnace, a modern furnace in this game, let alone a furnace from the 19th century, so we're just going with the flow down here, just making it look old and like a basement. I uh, didn't want to use any like actual electricity down here, so all the lights that I place are off-grid lights. They had more windows in their basement also, some of them had bars on them and some did not, and that's like part of the conspiracy. But placed one. And then some candles. Okay, here's the humidor situation. And I put on the screen why I've done this. So um, I found this layout of the Borden family cellar. And in the wood cellar, 21 is not just any quantity of wood, but a great quantity of wood. So I had to put a lot of those in there. <laughs> You'll see in the um, tour, they're all flipped upside down with the tool mod so that they don't look like they have roofs. But wanted to get that great quantity of wood. And then you can see the wood pile in that random open area over there. And here are the train carts that I sized up to look like piles of coal. Um, gonna lift that up on a couple of platforms and I, I don't know maybe that works <laughs> so yeah here's where I'm putting that fireplace in the end um, where it's supposed to be I assume like a coal burning a wood burning furnace I don't know I don't know man um, yeah little workbench that's supposed to be an actual chopping block And the basement's pretty much finished here. And then here is the garage that I'm um, decorating the inside to look what I imagine the inside of the barn to have looked like, maybe. Um, but yeah, there's a little outhouse out there. I used that wooden toilet. I switched that wooden toilet for one of those old Victorian ones with like the chain handle down there because they did have one that flushes inside the house. Um, but yeah, the outhouse in the garage barn thing is not supposed to have flushing capability. You just, it's like a, it's like an outhouse situation. Yeah, so here I'm going to build like a, they're not big enough for horses, these little fake stables, but just like an homage that maybe it was once a barn. It's what I was going for. But yeah, that just about does it with this build. I'm gonna add a couple more decorations and antique things. Thanks so much for watching. Here's the build on the gallery if you're interested in downloading it. The like button has only treats, I promise. Subscribe for more Sims builds and I hope you enjoy the tour.
Thank you.